Hi, I'm Gordon Wettstein, Assistant Professor of Electrical Engineering at Stanford University, and I'll be presenting our Emerging Technologies paper on Neural Holographic Neuro Displays. Virtual and augmented reality are an emerging media that will change the way we perceive and interact with the world. In these applications, a Neuro Display is the primary interface between the user and all digital content they see. So it's really important to engineer perceptually realistic and visually comfortable Neuro Displays. The basic idea of a NEI display goes back to the stereoscopes used in the 1830s. Surprisingly little has changed in their principle of operation in the last 180 years though. Today, enhancing virtual reality is one of the grand challenges of the 21st century as declared by the National Academy of Engineering. This is the very topic of today's talk. Almost all NEI displays are based on the magnifier principle. You basically look at the virtual 2D image of a micro display created by a magnifying lens. This fixed focal plane design is not natural. In the real world, our eyes focus or accommodate to arbitrary distances, depending on how far away the object is that we look at. Keeping the accommodation of the eyes fixed leads to the virgin's accommodation conflict, which results in eye strain, visual discomfort, double vision, reduced visual clarity, and other negative effects. A number of computational NEI display technologies have been proposed to solve this problem in the last few years. However, none of them is without problems. Very focal displays, for example, are really efficient and reasonably simple, but they require mechanical actuation of parts of the display or focus tunable lenses. Both are difficult to achieve within the device form factors and power constraints of wearable displays. Multiplane displays are a great idea, but they either require extremely high-speed spatial light modulators and focus tunable lenses or multiple display planes. Both of these options significantly increase the system complexity. Light field displays are also a really great idea, but their spatial angular resolution is fundamentally limited by diffraction. There is a display technology that actually utilizes diffraction to achieve extremely high image resolution, contrast, depth, and other benefits holographic displays. Here we see an example of somebody filming an optically recorded hologram that used to be exhibited at the MIT Museum. But even 60 years after their invention, and despite all of their benefits, holographic displays have still not become a mainstream technology. To understand why, let's discuss what a digital hologram actually is in the context of an EI display. Here's an illustration of a Fresnel type holographic NEI display. A laser emits a coherent light, so, sorry, a laser emits coherent light that is collimated by a lens and propagates to the spatial light modulator. Here, the phase of the field is delayed in a per pixel manner. The field continues to propagate and interference creates a visible intensity pattern that is perceived by, as an image by a user who observes it through the magnifying lens, which is typically called the eyepiece. How to compute the SLM pattern is one of the core challenges of computer-generated holography, and we'll get back to that in a second. In our recent SIGGRAPH Asia paper, we showed that the achievable field of view of such displays depends on the SLM size and the focal length of the lens. We also showed that the eye box size depends on the pixel pitch, the eye relief, and the wavelength. The executive summary is that reasonable fields of view can be achieved by currently available SLMs, but the eye box is typically very small. To compute the phase pattern that we need to show in the SLM for a target intensity image, we use computer generated holography or CGH. There are two types of CGH algorithms, direct and iterative ones. A direct approach takes the target intensity and propagates the corresponding wave field to the SLM plane. Due to the fact that most available SLMs can only modulate the phase of the incident light, but not its, in its intensity, we need to convert the propagated complex valued field into a phase only representation. Now free space propagation is a well studied topic. For a target intensity that is parallel to the SLM, one simply takes the Fourier transform, applies a transfer function, and then applies the inverse Fourier transform. Several different types of transfer functions exist, each making different approximations. Here we show the angular spectrum method as an example. For this 2D image example, we can compute this propagation in O n squared log n, which is usually very fast. And n here is the number of pixels in the target image. 
Several heuristics also exist to convert a complex valued field into a phase only field. The double phase amplitude coding method is one of them and represents a complex field as the sum of two phase only fields that are interlaced. Note that this is a heuristic and it doesn't always work well. For a 3D hologram, we can represent the target scene as a point cloud and propagate each of the points to the SLM plane as depicted here. But even if we propagate each depth layer at a time, the computational complexity of this approach is often prohibitive. So doing this fast remains an open research challenge. Using the same free space propagation models as described before, we can use iterative methods as well. Here, we iterate several times between the SLM phase pattern and the target intensity. This is much slower than a direct approach, but it typically gives us a better phase-only representation of the target image. In summary, iterative methods are typically slower but better, and direct methods are fast but often not great. With any iterative methods, such, that, uh, such as the classic gershberg saxon algorithm or the recently proposed Wörtinger holography approach, we can iterate longer to get a slightly better image quality, but there's an upper bound on what can be achieved. In our ETEC paper, we show that a simple stochastic gradient descent approach actually achieves the best image quality of all iterative methods in simulation. And we've developed a neural network architecture called HoloNet that achieves almost the same quality in real time. Let me tell you a little bit more about these new approaches to computer generated holography. The goal for any CGH method is to solve an objective function of the form shown here. Here, F uh, hat is our simulated model of free space propagation, uh, and A is the target amplitude. Note that the physical light transport in the display, F, is often slightly different from F hat because of optical aberrations, phase nonlinearities of the SLM, and other effects, but we'll get back to that later. For now, all we have is our simulated idealized light transport model, F hat. Now we can iterate using a simple gradient descent update rule, where we start with some initial guess of the SLM phase. We simulate the forward model. We compare the simulated result with our target using some loss function, such as mean squared error. And then we propagate the error back into the phase. This simple approach will eventually converge to a good solution if applied over and over again. To test this algorithm and compare it to alternatives, we ran the simulation. All methods look very good, although gershberg saxon is always a little bit noisy, and if you look closely, SGD is actually the best. This simulation assumes that the free space propagation model that we use for optimizing the phase pattern is the same as that used for simulating the final image. But let's see what happens if we add a small amount of model mismatch between the simulated model and the physical model by introducing a little bit of optical aberration. Well, all methods fail, including SGD. This is not surprising because a mismatch of the simulated and physical light transport, even on the order of the wavelength of light, can lead to completely different interference patterns. What this means is that a better model of the physical light transport in the display will probably uh, buy you a lot more than using more clever algorithms at this stage. But it's really hard to calibrate a holographic display at the required accuracy. We came up with a family of techniques that do exactly that in a fully automatic manner. We call this approach camera in the loop holography. The idea is simple. Use a camera in the loop to capture the image of the physical display, compare that with the target image, and backpropagate the error. This sounds easy, but it's not straightforward. I don't have enough time to go into the technical details, but you can look at our paper for more details. Let me show you some results. Looking at a direct comparison of SGD with the idealized propagation model and the camera in the loop model, we see that we can achieve a significantly better image quality with our simple idea. The colors and contrast are a lot better, noise is significantly reduced, for example, on the background, and the image just looks a lot better. I'll make a bold claim here and say that this is the state of the art uh, of computer generated holography today. The challenge is that you need a camera in the loop for each target image. To overcome this limitation, 
we came up with an idea that splits the optimization into a training stage and an inference stage. During the training stage, we use the camera to estimate a model-based representation of the physical light transport using a training set of images. During inference, we don't need the camera and only use our calibrated model for optimizing new target images. Comparing this model-based approach to the best previous CGH method shows that we can significantly outperform it. Here's a comprehensive comparison of a number of iterative CGH algorithms, including our two variants of camera in the loop holography. Both significantly improve over existing methods, with the camera in the loop optimization approach on the right being the very best. I also promise you a neural network, so here it is. It takes as a target image in sRGB space as input and converts it into amplitude. Then we use a unit to predict the phase at the target plane. This complex valued field is adjusted with the calibrated model I mentioned earlier and propagated to the SLM plane. Here we send the field through another unit to calculate the phase only SLM pattern, taking a few other terms into account. Using the resulting SLM pattern, we simulate the forward model, compare the result to the target image and back propagate the error into our two units during training time. Once trained, this network runs in real time. Compared to the best REC method today, HoloNet is substantially better, as you can see here in this captured data. Quantitatively, it's not quite as good as our iterative methods, but almost, and it runs in real time. Here are a few additional comparisons. The proposed method also works for 3D holography. Here we show a holographic very focal display mode. In this case, we calibrated one model for each of the two planes and then select one or the other to display an image. This works really well. We also explored a holographic multi-plane display mode where we simultaneously optimize three different depth planes. Here we show live capture from our camera for the green color channel and refocus the camera lens to those three planes. What I haven't shown you yet is our prototype setup, which looks like this. There's a laser, collimating optics, an SLM, a 4F system that we use to block out some of the higher diffraction orders, and a camera to capture the results. Let's zoom in. This is a live captured result of HoloNet. The content is generated in real time and captured in real time. The white box illustrates the active display area. All light outside of that box is not constrained by the algorithm. Although these results are not perfect, this is probably the best real time method anyone has shown. Let's stop at this frame and look at some comparisons. Here's the next best real time method, which is significantly worse. For completeness, here are also some results that are pre-captured with Gertzberg Saxon. The results are very noisy. Wertinger holography is a bit better, but also not great. This is our camera in the loop optimization, which is still not perfect, but among all of these methods, definitely the best by a large margin. Again, this result, similar to the other iterative methods, is not computed in real time, but captured live from our RGB display prototype. Because other computational displays use well-established micro display technology, it's really hard to beat them. Very focal displays are already moving into industry prototypes and products. 
Multiplane displays are also on the market. For example, Magic Leap's ML1 has two focal planes. And light field displays are a really great idea, but their resolution is limited by diffraction. Holographic displays, on the other hand, are enabled by diffraction, yet it is difficult to get as high of an image quality as with other displays. So light field and holographic displays and algorithms are probably the most interesting research direction here. And the main point I'm trying to make is that these are really complementary technologies. So with this, I'd like to thank you for your attention and the rest of my group, as well as our sponsors. Thank you.